Hey guys, this is Meeker here. I wanted to put together a build for Lifestaff players because I've been getting a lot of questions lately in terms of what they should run. Uh, so this is a rough build guide for like what Lifestaff should generally be running if they're going for a Void Gauntlet setup. If you're not going for a Void Gauntlet setup, this has some slight variations to it, but the base idea remains the same. The main noteworthy thing here is that there is a gear piece from the Sandworm Raid that gives Savior on the armor. The Savior is normally a weapon perk that is like very, very good for life staff and it is debated but between going for Savior on a life staff or going for Refreshing Move for the most part. But now you're just able to get this for free, which just is really beneficial overall. And uh, the main idea with this build is just go for Featherweight. Uh, featherweight is the biggest damage reduction that you can get in light armor. Uh, you'll see a lot of common themes for going for Featherweight across various builds. Uh, it is probably the best light armor artifact in the game. In medium, I would consider it to be tumbler feet wraps, and heavy, I'd consider it to be void dark plate. Uh, all the artifacts that just give armor just tend to be really good. There are some things introduced recently that will help mitigate that in terms of more armor penetration, but these are still the thing to go for for the most part right now. Uh, Hasted Vigor, in terms of this top perk, is just a very uh, solid perk that you need to run for, I think, um, one slot in every single build. Uh, the main thing with Hasted Vigor is it does take a slot for Enchanted Ward, but I still think it's worth getting. Basically, if someone hits you, you just get a 10% haste. This will allow you to run away from targets a little bit better, and I just think overall it's kind of necessary to help create distance and help escape situations. Uh, with Life Staff in particular, we're looking to build Refreshing. I didn't get to 4 out of 4 Refreshing, but got pretty close. Uh, you could drop an Enchanted Ward for Refreshing if you want to. Uh, slash Conditioning is something that's really good. Uh, typically, a lot of how builds work is that they do a little bit more elemental gems, they do a little bit less physical gems nowadays, and then they use Slash Conditioning on top of a Thrust Protection Amulet. Uh, this gives you good coverage to Slash, uh, to Thrust, and to Elementals, but it leaves you weak to Strike Damage. The main thing is, is that the only form of Strike Damage in the game, for the most part, is the Warhammer, and Warhammer isn't a huge threat to healers. Uh, that is something that is used in large scale, but it's not really used in small or medium scale whatsoever. So it's just something that you can kind of do to game the system and just become a lot more tanky. So we go for Featherweight there. Uh, in terms of our other gear, uh, Sandalion Taurus is another piece that you can get from the Sandworm that's really, really good on a lot of builds. This comes with Keen Speed on there. It turns out you could run heavy feet wear uh, in light with the Featherweight and then still be able to use them. So that's something that like you should always be looking to pick up on a lot of builds. The other nice thing about having it on armor is, is if with this procs, you could actually switch weapons and the keen speed will remain. Versus typically, if you put it on a weapon, if you switch weapons, it will go away, right? Because it's tied to that one tap weapon that has it. Uh, so that's kind of noteworthy. Uh, the legs and the gauntlets are pretty standard. The amulet, I went for unimpeded on here. This basically will reduce the potency of slows on you. Typically how people try to... Uh, kill life staff as they try to stack slows and then they try to chase them down the way that you can mitigate that is with things like unimputed uh, purifying heart and with stone form stone form particularly drops from lazarus if you're a new player uh, you can upgrade it it's very expensive to upgrade right now on fresh start but it is like the best heart rune in the game for the most part uh, basically it gives you grit they just made it harder to gain grit in this game and it's like one of the only ways to get passive grit uh, on top of all this like other stuff that we have going on here. We have Endless Thirst. What Endless Thirst does every time you pot, the pot will heal you for more. Pretty simple, very effective. Uh, life Staff wise, you can get Abyss Life Staff from the PvP area. You, it comes with Blessed and Refreshing Divine's Embrace, which are two perks that you really, really want. Put Refreshing Move on there as your last perk. Uh, you can upgrade it relatively cheaply. And then the other noteworthy thing too is if you put on a Rune Glass uh, gem here with a diamond, it says it's going to be 12% outgoing healing it turns out that's still 15 percent outgoing healing and they never fix that bug so very worth doing helps you get all charged a little bit better if you're going for a void gauntlet setup i'd recommend life taker if you're going for a, a rapier oriented setup which is like usually what healers go for the low, most part uh, you either if you're focusing on dps like if you're in a raid or something like that uh, you want to go put on the artifact rapier if you are looking to just live though, then you want to run a really low gear score rapier, like the lowest that you possibly can, because this will boost your healing output and it will reduce the damage that is incoming to you, and you don't really care about the offensive capabilities of the rapier. So it's something else that you can kind of look for there too as well to optimize. Uh, getting into trees here on life staff, it's basically just take everything on the left tree. It's really, really good. Uh, Divines Embrace with refreshing Divines Embrace basically means that 
uh, you can go infinite with this and you can just spam divine's embrace to heal people over and over that are below 50 percent hp uh, very very effective will keep people up to full and is one of the the reasons why people complain about healing in new world as being too strong because we use that perk combined with uh re refreshing lights embrace you could just kind of go infinite with that and you can self-sustain forever uh, sacred ground is really really important to have fortified sacred ground is a perk that you should always be looking to pick up on the healer as well uh that's something that's just a must have overall a clap or splash of light got buffed recently so that's something that we're looking to pick up too uh, splash of light is just really good in every single game mode certain modes where you'll want to run the uh, weapon perk for this because it will cleanse another debuff but if you don't run it it's still uh, plenty good it also has a pushback now which is a nice little buff for it for healers so if someone's on top of you and you're trying to heal yourself and your group splash of light is your solution if you're going for void gauntlet uh, scream is nice it's just a lockdown thing i put scream in a life taker in this case because it's just more consistent to get the disease out so if someone's chasing you can kind of lock them down with that put a, apply a root uh, apply the disease they might die in a few seconds uh, we have Tether on here. Tether applies a weekend. You could also run the Tether perk if you want to, but then you have to give up something else. Uh, what that will do is it will also apply a slow. So if you're getting chased by one person, this is a good way to kind of increase your survivability. And the main reason why you run uh, Void Gauntlet as an offhand for life staff, it, both PvE and PvP, is for Orb of the Decay. If you are in PvE as well, it might be worth dropping this Petrifying Scream and putting one point into Essence Rupture. Noteworthy, don't go down the rest of this tree for Essence Rupture, as tempting as it is. The instant you pick up this Invigorating Rupture perk, there is a bug with this that will... This perk effectively means or gives a bonus that will make it so that it can only apply like once every second. And if you have that, uh, then your Essence Rupture was tied to that bonus, so then it will only apply once every second. But if you don't pick up that perk, your Essence Rupture could proc as many times as quickly as you want. So for PvE-wise, it makes sense to only go down into one perk in this so that people could heal up a lot from it. Uh, but in cer certain situations where you're more focused on stam, it might be worth picking up this Invigorating Rupture, but typically it's not worth it. So that's something that's kind of noteworthy there. Uh, everything else here I think is relatively straightforward. Unimpeded is a little bit controversial. You could switch this out for a different perk if you wanted to. Stam Recovery is something that people used to go or divine. Uh, stam Recovery has been nerfed by a pretty significant amount and something that you have to force in an upgrade now. It's only giving half the benefit, and it has 1.5 times the cooldown that it used to have. Make sure you have Sacred on Ring. If you don't have Sacred on Ring, you can't really call yourself a healer. It's like very, very effective for everything. A Hardy is a must. Purifying Heart is a must. And yeah, I think everything else here is like pretty simple. Uh, don't worry about the gear score too much early on, too. I keep getting this question a lot. It's like, do I focus on gear score or do I focus on perks? Definitely focus on perks over gear score. Uh, the difference between 700 gear score and 725 gear score is about 10% mitigation and 10% more damage. So it's not worth jumping, like, going through hoops to try to get to that 3 perk bis for 725 immediately. Like, just stick to 700, slowly upgrade the pieces as you find ones that are acceptable. Like, I'd say if you find a 2.5 perk 725 piece, that might be better than a 3 perk 700 piece, but I wouldn't force it too, too much. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions about this, but... Uh, this is kind of a, a quick guide for anyone that is looking to get into heal and like what pieces they should pick up. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.